people pleaser. Uh, congratulations on the sale. How does it feel? Uh, how does it feel to have raised over half a million dollars? Uh, obviously, I mean, it feels good. I'm just, it feels surreal almost. Like I don't, mm -hmm. hasn't really like sit in yet. Other than that, there's like a huge pile of ETH like sitting in my wallet <laughs> right now that um, myself and the Uniswap team are going to like, mm -hmm. you know, figure out how we're going to allocate the funds. And then we'll post a follow-up on Twitter about it with all the details and stuff. So, And how did you and the Uniswap team come to be? How did you guys meet? Um, Tarun Chitra texted me a, a while ago. It was in January. Um, he texted me and then he was like, hey, somebody from Uniswap just messaged me asking if um, you'd be open like to working with them. And I was like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Let's go into the process of like how the symbolism for the in the in the in the piece x times uh, y equals k actually came about um was that all all your creative work or was there like a back and forth with like maybe hayden or people on the uniswap team like how like the obviously the unicorn would be a, a core feature but there's so much more in there as well tell us about that process it's mainly there's just a chat that has me um hayden uh teo and um khalil so teo is the strategy lead at uniswap and then Khalil is a designer at Uniswap. And then so initially, actually, Khalil had spoken to me about making several different like short um, animations sort of like going through the, the concepts of V3. Um, but then it's like eventually we decided to sort of just do like the one sort of hero um, mm -hmm. teaser video because at least like my, my approach with these things is um, they're always like, as you probably noticed, like not not so literal and um, they're like more abs on the abstract side of things, like abstract with a meaning, obviously, like, you know, I always, um, everything in my videos always mean something, but it's not maybe immediately obvious to the viewer, um, which I think is part of why people find the videos fun, I guess. It's like a little Easter egg hunt or something, right? Um, but yeah, so, and so eventually, you know, we kind of decided like, well, there's some really technical um, explanations about you know, like um, features of Uniswap V3 that, you know, require very, very literal um, animation videos, which, um, you know, also came rolled out later, you know, on, on Wednesday with that blog right. post. And I mean, that was your still, work as well? No, no, no. So okay. that was, um, but they still looked incredible and helped mm -hmm. people understand the concepts, which I think was really great. And then, so I was able to sort of, sort of just focus on the one like hero launch video. Um, and yeah. So then since that like decision was made, then I was a little, I, I had like way more sort of like room to just expand creatively and then just sort of do what I always do. Um, and so there were definitely a lot of like uh, brainstorms back and forth, you know, between Khalil and I about uh, initially we had just talked about, you know, something that involves, because you know, one of the main features is how uh, like the the bonding curve is now sort of like modifiable or you know like customizable mm -hmm. essentially and then so you know we discussed maybe concepts involving like um maybe like a power user that's like uh morphing something or you know like just something that's like you know like involving a user and like manipulation of the the curve itself or you know and we even threw out crazy ideas like what if we had like a landscape and like somebody would like you know like morphing the landscape or something and then the actual video came into fruition because Khalil ha had showed me this a uh, short story um and it was like about a uh, just like a magical forest or something and I I just like I really felt inspired by that short story and also you know when like he showed it to me I was just seeing like, um, you know, like images in my head um, already, like I mentioned in the video, Princess Mononoke was, you know, like high priority, like visual references for me because it's one of my favorite videos. Uh, I'm sorry, movies. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so then it kind of like in my head started to come together at that point. And then, um, so then I, I was like, okay, let me like sketch up a storyboard and then we can talk about it. And then so, pretty simple like four frames I had meant for it to just be like here's just a rough like four frames and then we can talk about it but then it actually just ended up being like I guess these four frames work as each like individual shots and then so so yeah um, that's kind of like how it came about and then obviously all the other like smaller details and stuff are 
Um, so that was like, you know, the sort of like the skeleton of the video. And then the other small details, you know, usually come up like as I'm doing production or something, you know, they're like, they always, it's always like a, an ongoing process, right? Like, you know, you can literally be walking outside and then you're like, well, I have this idea or, you know, like mm -hmm. even up until the last minute when, when I'm like editing or something, you know, like, like in the week, like leading up to when the video is about to be released, uh, there could be like new ideas and um, sort of like, yeah, like for example, the, the idea with um, like, so Khalil had said that the Uniswap team were uh, hoping for like the, the curves to be like, um, you know, like more than just like one color. And then um, from that input, I decided to like, instead of just making like individual like strands, different colors, but why not also integrate like the fact that the colors are like sliding, which is sort of reflecting that kind of uh, which section on the bonding curve, like we're going to choose her to provide your liquidity. So yeah, like, and that was like super late in the process as well. And um, so, yeah, there's like so many things that kind of, it, it's kind of like a, it happens stream with consciousness. Most, yeah, stream of consciousness and happens with a lot of my videos too, where I feel like there's a lot of happy accidents as well, where <laughs> like a thought will just like either randomly roll in or you know I'll be making something and I'll be like oh that looks cool what can I extrapolate from this or I don't know just I feel blessed that just the whole thing came together nicely yeah it's an amazing piece of art and I think my favorite piece about it and you talked about this in your like behind the scenes video was how the unicorn starts in like this desolate land and then moves into the world of ethereum which is like lush and rich talk about talk about that metaphor and, and why you think that that is a, a worthy metaphor to include in this uh, in this piece well, I mean, I think obviously Uniswap being so essential to the entire DeFi space and actually um, the like the whole Ethereum ecosystem, I think is um, sort of something that I wanted to convey in the video as well. So at least my take of it, and you know, the video is always also like open to some mm -hmm. degree of interpretation to the viewer as well. But um, my take of it is that sort of, like, you know, when Uniswap was introduced to the whole DeFi space, like they kind of changed the game, right? Like they introduced all this like new possibility of exchanging different tokens and providing liquidity and stuff, which, um, so, you know, like the way I like said it in my video was like, oh, it's like a desolate land was maybe kind of like a stretch and exaggeration. Like obviously the land was rich already before that, but it's kind of like, yeah, like Uniswap kind of brought this whole, you know, mm -hmm. um, ensemble of like, innovation and just like color you could say to the whole DeFi space and then so that's kind of what um, sparked the idea and then really drove the sort of like narrative throughout the video and yeah so you know I, I did I did just always have the intention of making the video slightly like psychedelic <laughs> um, <laughs> which is why you know like the end of the result was like stuff swirling around too I mean I try to keep it a a theme throughout the entire video as well there's there was so so many things that I wanted to fit in the behind the scenes video but um right. I didn't want to make it too long because you know people don't, like I wanted to keep it short and sweet but yeah like even there's like even down to tiny details like um that the saturation levels in the video from the beginning to the end uh change as well so it's like uh starts out a lot less saturated and then um it gets way more saturated towards the end, you know, as everything sort of like comes together, like um, the unicorn, Ethereum, and then there's like a pool underneath, which is also, you know, could be like a liquidity pool. And then the constellation above, like, you know, when everything comes together, it's like harmonious and colorful. So how long were you working on this piece before it was actually from start to finish? Actually, I think from ideation, it would be about a month and a half. Fortunately, I did um, have, uh, have like two artists who um, were able to sort of like, I was able to delegate some tasks mm -hmm. to, um, and also help me out with like, so I had this artist, um, Hafid, who is a great X particles simulation artist. Um, that's like a, in case you're not like familiar with it, it's just like a, a specific sort of like task and within the animation pipeline mm -hmm. um and so he's really good at that so you know there, there, was, there were a lot of things like involving like particles and um simulated in the video that um he uh did a phenomenal job with and i also had one of my 
old coworkers, like a girl that I, and good friend that I used to work with. And her name is Marion, super talented animator. She's worked on like uh, the new Pokemon movie, um, <laughs> like animating in the future and stuff, did such a great job. I asked um, her to help me out with uh, the sort of the movement of the unicorn. And that's why, you know, it looks so smooth and amazing. Mm -hmm. That's all hats off to her. So I was able to sort of just um, focus on like directing and also obviously like I did everything else. So, you know, like all the other like animating parts of it, like assembling the scene, like building some models and then also, you know, like curating the entire look and palette, um, compositing, rendering, uh, post-production, all that kind of stuff. I think that definitely helped the production sort of like speed up a little bit. Um, but it was, <laughs> I did like work a lot <laughs> throughout this like month and a half, but mm -hmm. it was like, it was like really fun, which is why I put so many hours into it because right. I'm having fun. And I'm actually really glad that, you know, the people that I brought on board said that they also had a lot of fun. It's just, everybody had fun making it. And that's, I think that's like the main goal at the end of the day. Pro I think artistic products always come out looking a lot better when people are passionate about what they're doing. And that's, that's something I'm personally very hopeful about with what Ethereum can bring to the world around it is the opportunities to create value that people had fun creating along the way. Um, and I think that's a, this is a perfect manifestation of that. Yeah, definitely. So uh, this animation is almost a week old in the public uh, sphere. And so, uh, you know, a week ago, none of this, none of this, all this news event hadn't, hadn't happened yet. So while you were, but you knew that you were going to NFT it. Did you have any sort of like guess as to like how much this would go for on the secondary market before the actual NFT auction started? I had no idea. I mean, um, the, the NFT wasn't actually part of the original plan at all. It was just an idea that I had um, sort of like halfway through production. Um, it was also because I, there were a lot of people who uh, I hadn't, you know, like I hadn't been minting some NFTs like, you know, way like when we say way back in the day in crypto, it's like not that long ago, but like you know, bull markets yeah. obviously <laughs> so long. Um, but it was definitely, you know, last year essentially. Mm -hmm. And then so okay. um, like I haven't, you know, because I, I've been sort of like so in invested in the DeFi video ecospace that, that I hadn't had time to sort of like dive into the NFT space. And obviously like NFTs like recently really blew up too. And um, there was like a tiny little bit of FOMO there, but also just like, people constant like always messaging me be like why aren't you like selling any nfts or like why don't you mint nfts like i would love to you know like mm -hmm. buy your nft or whatever and then i'm just like ah, i'm too busy like making videos <laughs> um and then i was like well why wouldn't i like double up on this you know but obviously i think um sort of like the the way i looked at it was just you know obviously the goal wasn't to make money but which is why I brought, I, like, it was all part of, like, I was just, like, to Uniswap, I was, like, why don't we make this an NFT and, like, make it worthwhile, which is donating it to a good cause, like, I have no idea how much we're going to raise, which is why we didn't, also didn't, like, settle on, like, one specific charity yet, because I was, like, I, like, I don't want to promise, like, oh, we can donate to three right. charities, just in case I only sell it for, like, a hundred dollars, and we can only, like, donate thirty dollars, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so, so, like, it's like, it wouldn't even be worth a gas fee. So yeah, like that was kind of why, but I was like, you know, depending on how much we raise, then we can sort of like um, decide on how many we can actually allocate to, which, you know, ended up obviously way exceeding my expectations. Like this whole DAO thing that just, I was like, I woke up, it was the- oh, We're gonna the get bidding, into that for sure. <laughs> like the bidding war ended like in, in the morning of my time and I woke up was like, there's suddenly like a DAO named after me. Like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let, let, let's get into that. So uh, the auction started on Thursday, my, my Thursday, and, and and then ended on Friday, which was your Saturday morning. Uh, and so the, then this massive bid, 100 ETH bid comes in from Andrew Kang. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that was that was surprising. And then Leighton Cusack, uh, signals on on Twitter saying, "Hey, who wants to like pool our capital together so we can buy this thing? Because we'll need to match. We'll need to beat this 100 ETH bid." Were you watching this happen, or were you asleep while this was going on? I saw his initial tweet about like, "Oh, does anybody want to get together a DAO?" Because um, Jameis had sent it to me, and then I was like, "Oh, that's cool." And I actually 
told Jameis too, I was like, I, I actually love, obviously I didn't know who was going to win the auction at the time, mm-hmm. but I was just like, I actually love the idea of the video being owned by like the community, the same community that supported me, you know, from day one, right? Like that's awesome to me, at least I was like, and it almost feels like weird that, cause like, this is like the Unisoft V3 like announcement video. Obviously it was like a big deal when it came out too. So it's like, it almost feels weird if it like just belonged to one person or something. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I was just thinking that it was a cool idea at the time. I didn't know how they were going to do it. Um, I just knew that they were, they were going to sort of something about that was happening, but obviously, you know, I wasn't like involved in the channels or anything. And then, so, mm-hmm. and then, yeah, like uh, when the hundred ETH bid came in, um, I was just like, okay, this is, already far exceeded my expectations <laughs> like literally I was having a conversation with um Khalil the designer like you know uh, a few days before like we were about to drop the nft and then we were just checking out foundation and we saw this like one nft that sold for 10 ETH and we're like wow 10 ETH like that's amazing <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah so obviously when 100 ETH came in like it was just nuts and then everything else was even crazier <laughs> Right. So now this group of, I don't know how many of them there are, like 12, 15 people. They, now they have this, an actual DAO, like you said, named after you, please, pleaser DAO. Uh, and when I was talking to Lace, Leighton, Leighton said that, well, um, th- this uh, pleaser DAO has excess ETH left over. And he doesn't know, like the, the DAO members, he thinks, doesn't really want any of their ETH back. And they actually want to like grow the DAO. But then what that means is that people pleaser, the artist needs to produce more art for the DAO to have a purpose. So my question to you is, what's the future of your artwork as it relates to tokens on Ethereum? And and has this event changed that trajectory at all? It definitely has because um, I had always been also kind of cautious. I mean, or not even cautious because it never really even came to me that I would be minting these videos as NFTs because in my head, um, obviously always the IP would belong to the protocol who commissioned it in the first place, right? Which is why I'm obviously super grateful that uh, Uniswap were so supportive of this decision. They're like, yeah, um, you know, it's yours, like mint it. And then, but obviously the donation we're making together because um, mm-hmm. this wouldn't have happened because of them. But um, yeah, I'm just like so grateful that they gave me this like chance to sort of um, broadcast my artwork to such a large audience as well. Um, because DeFi, I think, was sort of like a more niche community before. Um, so, but hopefully, uh, you know, going forward, I, I think I would like to sort of um, have a combination between minting my personal artwork um, and then also uh, definitely, but I think within, I also was having these ideas about, you know, even within my personal artwork, I want to still keep the same theme about, you know, putting in um, subtle references here and there to either DeFi um, or Ethereum ecosystem. And I think it would be a fun way for uh, people who are interested in um, the art to sort of look for those things as well. And, you know, towards a broader audience, like just the general NFT audience, they'd just be like, oh, this is a cool animation or like a cool piece of art. But for um, the DeFi community, which is, you know, my OG community, um, there's a, an extra meaning behind that where they can pick up on references to certain things that maybe other people wouldn't understand or just not know about. The fascinating thing to me about this story is that it is such a perfect, like, accidental orchestration of what <laughs> makes this Ethereum so awesome. We have this application that is so powerful and in my opinion, like resonant with the values of Ethereum. We have this DAO, which collected many different people to, uh, to empower them to get something done that they wanted. And then we had the funding of cultural and artistic expression, which wouldn't have been, uh, been able to have been funded with half a million dollars to in, without this uh, medium. Uh, and then right before, into, the other coincidence about what happened is right before Vitalik on his blog put out this post about legitimacy and talked about how like NFTs and, and many other things uh, receive a lot of value because humans deem them to be legitimate. And when he explicitly said in this one paragraph about how uh, the creator of an NFT can help bless the value of an NFT by perhaps donating some of the revenue generated to a charitable cause that humans agree has 
uh, value. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that, I think by the time this blog piece had come out, you had already committed to donating uh, all of the revenue to charity. Uh, and so the fact that you were doing that without like the input from Vitalik, which many people just take Vitalik's input and run and runs with it. I think you did it with, with, with uh, by committing it before that was incredibly cool. And that just really just ties a great bow on this story. How do you, how do you think about that, that component of the story and how it kind of uh, impacted the, the story of this animation? I actually, yeah, I didn't know about it until I saw it in your tweet initially. Um, and it's, it's pretty crazy to me. I, everything about this whole situation is just seems like a crazy blessed coincidence almost mm -hmm. like, you know, including the Dow forming was unexpected. And then also I didn't, um, prior know about this um, uh, Vitalik article and it's really just a very crazy coincidence and um, I'm glad that he sort of shared that value you know I really think that there's so much money going around in in crypto that we definitely have more than enough to sort of distribute it and put it towards something that's like worthwhile. Actually, I was really inspired by um, one of Chao Wang's um, tweets a while back, which I had retweeted, um, which he was talking about, um, sorry, I don't remember the exact quote, obviously, but he was basically talking about how, um, nothing against trading, but just, oh, the act of trading is not necessarily like beneficial to society. Um, so, you know, instead of like flexing on, you know, material goods or something, you should, flex on how you've helped other people financially. And um, I'm actually not a trader myself because I don't have time <laughs> to do those things. Mm -hmm. But um, but I, I did feel very resonated with his tweet. Like his tweet was so inspiring. I was like, oh yeah, I think totally more people should be doing that in the space. And um, hats off to people who already are. And uh, I hope that, you know, I'm like, I'm not wealthy myself. So um, I was like, but I have this ability to sort of generate, uh, like, a, you know, using my skill set to generate something that does have value, hopefully, <laughs> and which turns out it did. Um, and I had always thought about um, wanting to do an NFT drop that was um, committed to charity, but I just never found the right sort of opportunity to and to be quite honest I was also a little bit scared to take that leap of faith because doing an auction is scary right it's <laughs> um not something like a, this auction thing is not something that I've ever done before but so I think you know with the sort of like support of Unisop um I felt a little bit more confident being like okay I think you know there's gonna be at least I knew I had you know a, a um, like a great community that I had always supported and were fans of my work, but I wasn't sure, you know, the valuation of that or anything at all. And so, yeah, this is just crazy. I'm super grateful. And I hope that this will also inspire more acts like this in the future as well. Yeah, yeah, that that last point, inspiring more acts like this, I think is really important because there's a frequent line of conversation in the crypto space like, oh, cool, we're playing with these new financial assets, you know, everyone's getting hilariously rich, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then the, the question is like, well, what happens if we just create the same old institutions and same old structures that we came from, except now, like, great, now new people are rich. And my answer to this is always like, well, if we if we do want to have like a revolution in how society operates, it's not going to be just the technology, but it's going to be what how what people and and how people leverage this technology. And the the way that I see this truly being different is like the, there's a different cultural shared ethos of how we recirculate value. And like like mm -hmm. like to what you said, like trading one asset for another doesn't create value. Creating value creates value. And if we can mm -hmm. re recirculate that value in ways that are better than on our previous system through mm -hmm. a means such as mm -hmm. NFTs, then that mm -hmm. is something that is meaningfully different. And in, in my opinion, a much better improvement upon the way we used to do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, you know, Vitalik's point about how um, not just the legitimacy, but, you know, about how multiple people agreeing that something has value and then, you know, compounds its value essentially. And I think, yeah, and then his point about how, you know, when you put this to a good cause, it, I think it will definitely ampli amplify that um, value because you're not only just people agreeing that this has value now, but that it's directly 
benefiting um, people who are in need, for example. Um, and I think that in itself is just so priceless. Um, so yeah, was, he really hit the nail on the head with that article. <laughs> For people pleaser, you hit the nail on the head with your animation, and so I could, I think I speak for ba basically all of uh, NFT speculators and Ethereum culturalists that we will watch your career with great interest. Uh, you have made a, a, in my opinion, a, a landmark event in the world of DeFi and NFTs, uh, and I hope this is the first of many. Oh, thank you so much.